If the kitchen's where you'd rather have your friends and family gather, you should hit the like and subscribe down below. And if filling plates and platters while maintaining flavor matters, then there's a stellar cook that you should know. It's rain, the planet with a pilot. They'll keep you fed and coming back for more. So come on, take up space. Rain will make a tasty plate. And tell the diet Karen's where to go. It's the planet where the pilot cook can show. Howdy y'all, welcome back to Planet with a Palette. It has been an interesting couple of weeks. So as some of y'all know, I was recently in an accident at a Home Depot. Many people uh, guessed and gathered correctly that I was there shopping for plants. As y'all know, I got a new scooter and um, it can go up to like 16 miles on a full charge. So that was super cool. Um, but <laughs> unfortunately, um, you know, my jean vest that I wear sometimes you see me in it probably. Um, so I was at the Home Depot with Arthur and we were in the line getting ready to check out and well, we were checking out and I was like filling out some paperwork, um, to get a Home Depot card. And I was like distracted doing a bunch of things. I was on the phone with my spouse. I hung up the phone with my spouse. I'm doing this stuff. And I start taking my plants and putting them back in the basket. And I lean forward, my jean vest catches on the hook of my scooter, the lever that makes you propel forward. And I start to go. And I mean like, whew, it just happened so fast, you know, it was like, ah. And so it was really scary. <laughs> I didn't know what to do. I was kind of like flabbergasted and trying not to hit people as I'm going towards the door. And I thought, well, okay, well, it's an automatic door. So maybe it'll open for me. And people saw that I was coming towards the store and that I couldn't stop. And so people tried to step in on the door frame with well, the automatic door didn't open. It didn't budge at all. And so what happened was that I rammed straight into it. So how the doors are supposed to open like this. I went through the center and they opened like this and the giant like 15 foot doors, the metal part got caught on my legs and my scooter, bent the frame all the way. It was no more stunt driving for me. It was rough. I had so much adrenaline at first that I didn't even realize that I was bleeding. I came back into the store. I was just trying to pay for my merchandise, but I was just like, it was so scary because when I came out the doors, people were trying to walk in. I was trying not to hit them. I was trying to unstick the jacket or figure out how to turn the thing off because it wouldn't let me turn the key. And I just was like screaming because I'm going into the parking lot. Everyone stay away from me. I can't stop. <laughs> I was able to stop, you know, like not that far outside the doors. But by that time, the damage to the doors and to my body were already done. So my legs, um, are still healing and I'm supposed to be keeping them up. I've been doing that as much as I possibly can, but I do, I, you know, I have a life, I have a kid to feed, I have a house to run. So I do have to get up and do stuff. And I figured I would, this is not the meal I had planned for Easter week. As y'all know, I am just wanting so badly to make all these ribs and <laughs> watermelon salad and all the things and we're gonna do it. But um, for now, we're gonna do an easy dinner because, well, I'm in recovery. Um, my legs are wrapped up. I've been to the hospital twice. It's been a rough couple of weeks. And I'm supposed to be traveling soon to see my spouse in a month. And if my, hi, hi, Archimedes. Hi, baby. And if my legs are not healed up by that time, I will have to postpone my trip. And me and my spouse haven't been together in person in almost two years. So I'm really hoping I don't have to postpone my trip. But I was talking to them today and they basically said, you know, your health is the most important thing. So let's get you back in tip top shape. And then we will worry about what we're going to do to see each other. So that's the plan. Anyways, today I'm going to be cooking for y'all something that I really love. Well, it's my take on my dad's recipe. It's simple Southern deliciousness, um, great Northern white beans and ham. And I'm very excited about this. So the first thing you want to do with any sort of bean situation is you want to sort them. You want to go through and basically 
any beans that just don't look that great, you want to get rid of because like nobody wants ugly beans. <laughs> also, they could be bad. You don't, you just don't want to chance it. So we're going to do a quick soak on these which you can soak them overnight, just like most beans, or you can do a quick soak where you bring it up to a boil and then you turn it down to simmer and you let it sit for an hour. Rinse and sort your beans in a large pot. Add six to eight cups of water, bring to a rapid boil, boil for two minutes. Remove from heat, cover and let sand, drain and rinse your beans. So, easy peasy. We are going to put our beans in here. We're just going to go through them. Make sure there aren't no uggos in here. Okay. So when you're sorting through, you want to pick out any that are like discolored, broken, just basically your not yummy looking beans need to come out of here so that you just have a pot of deliciousness. And thankfully, this bag of beans really doesn't have that many that don't look good. And in my experience, the ones that look unappetizing, if you forget to sort your beans, the ones that look unappetizing usually do not taste good. So, you know, sorting the beans is an important part of the process. And honestly, I find it kind of like, I don't know, relaxing, kind of like a meditation, you know, a sensory thing, if you will, just sticking your hands through the beans, finding, see this guy, he don't look right. discolored. Okay. I think we've pretty much got all the not so good beans out. Can you see how this can be relaxing though? Here's all our bad boys. I feel like, why do I feel like <laughs> I could sell these magic beans to grow a beanstalk? All right, so now we are gonna put some water in these beans, six to eight cups. I'm not gonna measure it because we all know I don't measure anything, so. I'm sorry, I know I'm not looking up to snuff today, but I'm really just doing my best here. So, you know, some days are better than others. I went to the hospital a couple of days ago because my wounds weren't healing right. Um, and I've been put on all kinds of medications and have to redress them twice a day. It is not a vibe, but we're doing what we can. And even though this is meal is far from fancy, it is quite delicious. So got our beans in some water. Just doing one final check to make sure they all look good here. And then let's put them up to a boil. While we are waiting for our pot to boil, I'm gonna have a little chat with y'all. Um, I've been enjoying these little chats I've been doing while we're waiting for stuff to do its thing in the kitchen. And that's the first part of this is that I wanna thank everyone who reached out last week and said things about being disabled and things like that. And I just wanna thank all of you for sharing your experiences and um, you know understanding where I was coming from and just being the lovely people that you are because honestly it makes running this channel such a joy and <laughs> even though I've been having a hard time and I've been in bed and all the other things like I really have been one of the things that's been so frustrating is how much I've wanted to get back to doing Planet with a Palette. So um, this is just kind of a little sweet spot for me, being with y'all every week and spending my Sundays with you guys and making food because I love food. Food is a love language for me. But that's actually what I wanted to talk about today. Some of y'all know that me and my spouse have been in relationship therapy for the past couple of months. It's because being apart from each other has been extremely difficult. We both struggle day to day with our own 
particular things and issues and um, it's made having a relationship really hard to go so long without seeing each other. Um, and this trip that I had planned that I am so excited about and I still am hoping, hopeful, <laughs> that I get to go on, um, it kind of meant a lot because it's been at the end of this, you know, thing that happened with us with customs and everything that has slowed down our track to being together. And I said today, um, we were talking and I said some things like, you know, I just wonder how many more of these like, you know, travel gone bad or situation didn't work out the way we planned, I can handle. And they said some things that was well, usual, you know, really inspired me and got me thinking about stuff. And they said, you know, first of all, that the most important thing is that I get healthy and I, and then my legs are better. And if that doesn't happen, we're going to plan originally what we were going to do, which was have a trip for my birthday. And it got me thinking about backup plans and about the kind of person that I used to be before I was in therapy for so long and started my sort of healing journey from PTSD. And it got me thinking how, you know, when you're a person with mental illness or neurodivergency or just a person personing, um, it can be so difficult when plans change and things happen that are out of your control. And it really, you know, it ruins something that you were looking forward to, or, you know, things get shifted at the last minute and you have to make accommodations and it just can really throw you off mentally. It can really lead to a lot of different things. For me, you know, the depression of once again, having to go however long, however much longer without seeing my spouse, that's it and everything. But, you know, the fact that they were just had this level of ease about, you know, rearranging our plans and like, okay, well that if it doesn't work out, which I hope it does, then this is plan B and this is what we're going to do. And it just got me thinking about how adaptability is so important. And it's really important, not only personally in your personal life, but also in the world that we live in because things are changing and, you know, people with they, them pronouns are out here on YouTube. <laughs> Um, the, the world's changing and people are evolving and, uh, people are becoming more comfortable being themselves. I was watching a talk mm, the other day with a lock, a lock. I can never pronounce their last name, but Alok um, is a comedian, but also does a lot of other talks and everything. And they are non-binary, gender non-conforming, very beautiful and handsome and just lovely and well-spoken. I follow their content on Instagram and also, you know, they have reels and they were on the Hannah Gadsby gender agenda special that came on Netflix. That was really cool. They said that in the past, control was considered to be part of love. How parents would love their children is by assuming control in a relationship. How uh, a man in, in the past would show their love for their uh, you know spouse, their woman, would be to control certain aspects of the relationship, the money, the whatever, the whatever. But the thing is that we are learning as we grow is that control is not love. And it has no real place in a love situation. Guidance is possible without control. Love is possible while also maintaining a person's autonomy. And I do think that's so important because even with my kids, you know, I want them to be the people that they are. And I want to do what I can do as their parent to try to facilitate the best version of that. But that doesn't mean that I control them. Do we have rules that are in place for their safety and other things? Yes, we do. But I don't want to control who they are. You know, my oldest son is getting to the age where he's starting to think about what he's going to do with his future, whether he's going to go to college, all these different sort of things. And it's very important for me as a parent to not put a lot of pressure on him. First of all, we know that college is not what 
we were told that our us Gen Xers were told that it was we told we were told that it was like a hundred percent ticket to you know a better life and that we were gonna be thriving economically but only if we went to college and uh, just so you know I did go to college I did not graduate but a lot of my friends who um, I have three years of psychology degree uh, major it would have been useless as a bachelor's degree but you know I could always go back but the thing is that we're learning that control is not love. And in learning that, we also have to unlearn the behaviors that we have that come from trying to control a situation, you know, and autonomy. A person's autonomy is the most important thing that you can give them. And if you're trying to control them or control a situation, then you're not giving them space to be themselves or space for a, you know, dynamic to exist between two people. If you're trying to control a relationship and make things happen in it, let's say I, I want to get married, but my partner doesn't, and I'm trying to control this or, or weave the narrative to my liking, then somebody's not getting what they want. So it's not really, we have to learn to accept the things that we cannot control. And part of that is learning that we don't control other people and that we don't control situations. And it all comes down to this idea, which is not so radical, actually. It's like the most simple, plain idea in the world is radical acceptance. I don't know why they call it that, because it really is just accepting things that happen. Accepting them. It's like you don't have to like it, but you have to accept that this is what's happening. I don't like that I got hurt. <laughs> it really sucks, but I'm accepting it because it's part of what's happening right now and trying to move forward. Explain why the backyard doesn't have rooms. Well, because the backyard doesn't have a house around it, right? So it couldn't have rooms. I mean, you could use the power of your imagination. But it wouldn't be a backyard if... If it had, yeah, if it didn't have, if it had rooms, it wouldn't be a backyard, right? Yes. Yeah. So anyways, all this to just say that accepting people as they are, accepting situations as they are, radical acceptance of others and of situations is something that makes you more adaptable as a person and will make honestly life a lot easier. Because when you're not trying to control things and, and write a narrative a certain way, then you can allow things to happen. So if this person is not someone who wants to get married or marry you, then pushing for that scenario is never gonna make it a better situation. Instead, you allow what's gonna happen to happen and maybe at some point you find someone who is more compatible with you, but that wouldn't have happened if you were busy trying to control the narrative. So it's not that you shouldn't have some control over your own life, over your own destiny. Of course, our, our choices are important, but it's also very important to accept the things that we cannot control. And I think that that is an important lesson for all of us and something that I'm still very much <laughs> working on myself. Now that we have our pot at a rolling boil, we are just gonna turn it off, remove this pot from the heat, cover it, and let it sit for an hour. Now, while we do that, I'm also going to be getting some other ingredients ready. So one of my additions to this dish that I really like is roasted garlic. And it's very important that you roast the garlic because it just gives it a different kind of flavor that I really want in this dish. So I'm taking my pieces of garlic here, my cloves, and getting them naked. And then we are gonna put them with a little bit of oil into a pan and we are gonna roast them. Looking good. Now I have seen them just cut the top of the garlic like this and slather it down with oil and then you can squish it out. I've never personally done that. It looks pretty cool, but I've always done my roasted garlic flat on a pan. So that's how we're gonna do it. 
Also, I feel like when you do that, you're wasting some the tops of the garlic a little bit. So we're not doing that today. That does mean shelling some garlic, which means we're getting our hands a little sticky, but that's okay. We love garlic. I love working with garlic. Worth it. So worth it for that flavor. Yeah. And I am taking an entire head of garlic for this because you can never have too much garlic in my opinion. I mean, you can, but it would be hard <laughs> to have too much garlic. Especially because when you roast it, it takes some of the spice out of it, some of the bite out of it. So you can really do, you can really afford to have more garlic in it. If there's any way anyone can do anything, then it's possible. Uh, yeah. No matter what? Well, I mean, someone being able to do it is what makes it possible. That is the mm. definition of something being possible. Like, so if anybody does it. Then it's possible, yeah. Agreed. Also, if someone doesn't do it, that doesn't mean it's impossible. It just means it hasn't been done yet. Like. If there is any way to do it. Then that means it's possible, yes. Like, there are some things, you know, like, that people thought that they couldn't do, and then somebody came along and figured out how to do it. Yeah, that may happen in the future. Well, yeah, and it's happened in the past. Like, yeah, like people designing an airplane, and now we can fly. Right. And that's something we didn't think yeah, we'd be able to do. Yeah, that may happen in the future. It probably will, because as technology advances the things we're capable of doing becomes more and more right so normally i would put a little bit of olive oil on this or a little bacon grease but i have something special right now i have duck fat i have duck fat and i think that this is gonna make an incredible roasted garlic so i am gonna just splash it with just a little bit of duck fat. Yeah. Get them all oiled up here. And then we're just going to stick them right in the oven to roast. So the duck fat is for an upcoming episode. I had my friend Monica over and we have an episode coming up um, right before Passover starts, a Passover episode. Monica is Jewish and um, her family has always done a Passover dinner and we wanted to do that. And we're gonna be making something that y'all have requested many times, matzo ball soup. <laughs> We've already recorded the episode and it was so good. It's incredible, I can't wait. Mm. All right, so now we've got our garlic roasting, we've got our beans sitting, and in no time we'll be putting this very simple but very delicious meal together. So now that our garlic is roasted, we are just smashing it with a fork. This garlic honestly looks so good that I just want to eat it right now, but we can't because it's got to go in our meal. So our beans have been soaking for one hour. Now we are going to, whew, still hot in there. So now we're gonna rinse them, drain all this water, rinse our beans, already tell just from that quick soak how much more space they're gonna take up because beans they get bigger as they cook now we're gonna put them back in the pot and we are gonna add six more cups of water again I'm not measuring I'm just eyeballing where I want it to go 
which is gonna be a little above the beans. Now, the great thing about these white northern beans is that when you smush them, which we are going to smash some of them, not all of them, they make like almost like a creamy base, which is gonna be perfect for our ham. That's about six cups. First thing we're gonna do is we are gonna throw in one chicken bouillon cube to dissolve in with them. You can also use chicken stock if you want to. Um, I just happen to have these bouillon cubes and they're perfect for boiling water, so might as well stick these in. Here we go. Of course, we are gonna add our yummy, yummy roasted smashed garlic. There's a little bit of garlic left on my fork. I love the part where you're just building the beginning of flavors. It's, I get so excited about what's gonna happen next. Mm. Some pepper. I like a lot of pepper in my beans. And I probably are, am going to season these a second time around and some salt. Oh yeah. Now we are putting these back on to boil, only this time we are going to turn them down to a simmer once they start boiling. Yummy, yummy. So while our pot is getting ready to boil, I am going to prep our next part of this. And the great thing about this meal is it's super inexpensive. It lasts a long time. It freezes amazingly. And so you're going to get a bone in ham steak. I usually get from Walmart. This was like seven bucks. Okay. And I like the bone in because it gives you a little bit of the like bone marrow and the good fattiness that's around the bone that really helps flavor the beans. But I'm going to do something real simple and just chop this up. Now it's really important to me with this ham steak that you do not remove the fat. The fat is gonna give us a bunch of flavor. So we're cubing up our ham into some like reasonable size cubes, like so. And then we're just gonna, once the pot is boiling and ready to simmer, we're just gonna throw this in. We're gonna let the ham cook in it the whole time and it's gonna give our beans such a delicious flavor. Ugh, I'm so excited. I haven't made this in a while. And you know, when you're not feeling well, soups and one pot meals, that's, this is comfort food, you know? And it does, it always makes me think of my dad. You know, um, my dad and I were separated for many years. Um, I did not grow up with my dad knowing my dad. He and my mom split up when I was a baby and she had moved and he had moved and um, we lost touch. And he wasn't in my life for a really long time. But when I was 17 years old, I sent out a letter to everyone in the United States with his name, which is quite a unique last name. And it was only three people. <laughs> One of them being my grandfather, actually. And I got a message back from one person saying, I'm sorry, but the person you're messaging about couldn't be your dad because, you know, he passed away um, before you were born. Um, and I was really disappointed, thought I wasn't gonna, you know, wasn't gonna happen, I wasn't gonna find my dad. And uh, later the same day as I got that letter, I got a phone call and it was my dad and we've had a relationship ever since I was 17. Um, you know, it's hard building a relationship with someone new in your life. Um, I had two brothers that I didn't know about and you know, me and my dad, we've had our ups and downs, but mostly it's been really good. We're a lot alike, explains a lot about me. Um, one of the things that we both love is to sing. He's a musician and he's really good. He can play pretty much any instrument he puts his hands on, although he mostly plays like bass guitar and guitar. And he sings as well. We've 
performed together several times. One thing great about my dad is that he's always been very accepting of me. When I came out as being queer, you know, I was quite young. I was 20, 21. He was very nice to my girlfriend when he met her and he never, it really never seemed to phase him too much. When I came out as being non-binary, I don't think he really understood at first necessarily. And I mean, it's hard, it's a hard thing to wrap your mind around. But he was never mean about it or anything like that, never. But he did for a while, kept, you know, posting things on my Facebook that were meant to be really sweet, but it'd be like, my amazing daughter, my beautiful, amazing daughter. And at some point we had to have the talk. And he was so sweet and he basically just said, you know, I don't ever want to do anything that makes you feel uncomfortable. I knew you had some gender stuff going on long before you told me, which is, you know, I think anyone who knows me really well, it's pretty evident. And he was just like, you know, yeah. And then he said, can I still call you sweet pea? He said, yes, dad, you can still call me sweet pea. He said, okay then. Thankful for the people in my life who accept me, who love me, and would love me without control, and just with the radical love and acceptance for the person that I am it means a lot. So shout out to my awesome dad for being awesome. And also for teaching me so many yummy tricks in the kitchen because honestly, this man can cook. And, oof, he's a good cook. He makes an amazing gumbo, an amazing beef stew, uh, which I made my version of. I've added a few things as I tend to do. He makes, oh man, he makes the best burritos. I should make my dad's burritos. He makes a killer burrito. He makes a lot of good food. Did I say gumbo? Because his gumbo's off the chain. That's a thick piece of fat, but that is flavor right there. That is a flavor cube. Got our ham all cubed up. I see this pot is like getting there, it's starting to steam a little bit. So once it starts to boil, we will lower the heat and then we will throw in our ham. This ham is fully cooked, which means I get to eat a bite. Mm. I forgot how good this is. This has been on my list to make for y'all. I have an ongoing list that always has ideas on it. Things I've been cooking, things I haven't made in a while. Just my favorite recipes, you know. This has been on the list for quite some time. So now that I'm hurt and I can't do my ribs and all of that, we will do this easy recipe. And yummy. Okay. Are these beans boiling? I'm gonna go ahead and throw this guy in. You see all this mushy stuff in the center? <laughs> it's flavor. So speaking of being a musician, when I was younger, I was in a couple of bands. I was in um, a punk band called Helen and the Felons. And the joke was that it was at first an all girl band and Helen was actually the drummer who was the only person who wasn't a girl. Um, so that was fun. And then I performed with another band for a while called Du Bois. They were like, um, they were like a indie rock sort of band and they performed um, every weekend at this like sort of open bar, um, outdoor restaurant place. And it was really fun. Um, but I wrote a song um, when I met my dad and I don't remember all the words too. I don't remember the whole song. I was 17, okay? <laughs> so you'll have to forgive me for the simplicity of this song, but um, it started something like, 
So many times I've wondered where you might have been. And often I have pondered when we meet again. I don't remember the next part. I remember the chorus. And dad, I've never been so glad as I was to hear your voice. And dad, all these years have been so sad. But today my heart rejoice. My dad. Yeah, anyways. I'm gonna cry. I'm gonna cry. <laughs> Here we go. That is a boiling pot, baby. So we are turning it down all the way to a simmer. And next, we're gonna put in. yummy yummy ham who would have thought that oh my gosh it's been more than 20 years 25 years after writing that song and after meeting my dad for the first time I would be here on this cooking show making one of his yummy yummy dishes Life is weird, isn't it? And kind of amazing. All right. We're gonna let this simmer. I'm gonna stir it up a bit. We need a, we need the right spoon for this. Stirring up a little magic, perhaps. up this magic right now. The cool thing about this ha these ham cubes is that they're going to be in the pot for so long that they're going to start to break down and you're going to have like smaller. It's not going to be these big chunks. <laughs> it's going to break down the meat and it's going to be so good. <laughs> so we're going to come back. Oh, forgot. You're supposed to set it like that. So it's a little tilted. And then we're just gonna let it simmer for about two hours. And when we come back to our pot, we're gonna mash our beans up a little bit, check, see how the consistency is, if it needs a little more time, you know, what we need to do. And we're gonna add a few more seasonings, um, just, you know, to taste at the end. Oh, I do wanna add one more thing before we go though. And I really love the garlic coming out in these beans. So in addition to the roasted garlic, we are gonna also add some garlic powder. So really simple. Garlic powder, chicken bouillon, salt, pepper, there we go. And ham. And it's pretty much that simple. Um, like I said, we might add a little bit seasoning at the end but it's gonna be so good i hope y'all are ready for a yummy easy one pot meal i actually forgot to say this part but we are gonna be stirring intermittently just to make sure that no beans are sticking to the bottom that everything is marrying together nicely um i'm probably gonna stir it in like 45 minutes 30 45 minutes and I'll just do it a few times throughout the couple of hours. But, you know, I didn't want to leave that out so you don't end up with beans stuck to the bottom of the pot. You do want to stir it occasionally. Just check in on it. Give it a little quick stir. And, yeah. All right. So it's been going for about two hours. What we want to do is check our beans. They are so good. I think a little more pepper, but honestly, other than that, they don't need a dang thing. Mmm. Mmm. That's good. Mmm. Oh my gosh. Add some pepper. Ooh. You can taste the ham. You can really taste the ham in these beans. 
I am going to use a masher and mash them up a bit because what I'm looking for is to thicken it up. I want to take it and mash it. Yeah, it's thickening up a bit. Mm. Oh, that's the business. Mmm. We need some cornbread with this. Mmm. Yeah. That is amazing. You are not going to be sorry if you make these. Mmm. Gotta give a shout out to my dad. Let's get a piece of ham here. beans, some ham. Look at that. smell of vision Yeah. Wow. Oh my God. That ham is just falling apart. Mmm. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Wow, that is really good. Hot. <laughs> I bet delicious. Mmm. Doing that happy dance already. Ooh, baby. Yeah. Mmm. That is a heal you up meal. Mmm. Yummy. So I didn't have the spoons to make cornbread with this. So I made some biscuits right out of the can. Yeah, no. Um, God, this is good. I haven't had this in way too long. Mm. It's comfort food, you know? So simple. This might be the best batch I ever made. I didn't even have to add anything but a little extra pepper. Mm. Simple but absolutely delicious. And the leftovers freeze great. In fact, the first time I ever ate this was at my dad's house and he had some leftover in the freezer we heated it up and I was like what do you mean white beans and ham well, now I know mm. and the minute I tried it I was like oh you gotta give me this recipe dad was like it's super easy mm. that's the thing about dad's food is it's Usually fairly simple, but dang delicious. He makes a lot of comfort food like this. I've never tried 
a single thing he made that I wasn't a huge fan of, so. Mm. Mm. I went ahead and started another meal for tomorrow night. That's what's in the oven. I'm making very simple to bacon wrap chicken livers. They're so good. My friend Monica, who y'all will actually meet next week, she's doing a Passover episode with me, as I mentioned before. She is the one who told me about bacon wrapped chicken livers. It was so good. You know, I've always liked chicken livers. They're kind of a divisive food. Some people like them, some people don't. I will tell you that if you've never had them wrapped in bacon, I would give them another try. Mm. But I do, of course, love the plastic southern fried ones, too. Mm. This is a great meal for some sweet tea. Mm. Mm. Wow. I feel like I've been eating for less than five minutes. This bowl is almost gone. Mm. There is nothing like some comfort food. food on my shirt. See now this is why I only own one white shirt. And I'm going to tell you when I bought this shirt first time out. First time I wore it. I stained it. Thankfully it seems I was able to get the stain out but this was some cornbread though. Mmm. I did make an episode where I made cornbread or cornbread muffins. I'll put, I'll tell you the episode down here because I don't remember which one it is. I love just pointing into the ether and then <laughs> down here, look. The power of editing. Mm. Well, this might be the quickest eating section I've ever done. That's because it's so dang good. Mmm. Mmm. Mm-hmm. Mmm. Oh my gosh. The great part is I have a big pot of this left for later. Oh my gosh. Well, I gotta get back in there and put my legs up. But before I do, we have a couple of major announcements to make. First of all, I want to shout out and thank Joette Cantor for offering such a cool prize for viewers um, for this month. And it is a two night stay um, in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. And our winner of this contest, which is literally just random, if you watch the show, if you've been on the channel, you were entered into the contest. Um, 
Lily Pod 9393, you are the winner of the prize. So I hope you're going to enjoy your stay in Baton Rouge. Um, let me know how it goes. And thanks again, Joette, for offering such a cool prize. You're amazing. Next up, of course, we have to announce the Planeteer of the Week. The Planeteer of the Week this week is Shelly Triantis 814, I believe, or 314 down here. <laughs> um, my birthday twin. Hey, hey. So you always comment on the show and I just love getting your comments and I'm always so excited when I see, oh, my birthday twin is back. So you are the Planeteer of the Week and all of you are the best. I love you so much. Thanks for joining me even though I'm not feeling great. I'm gonna go rest in bed, try to heal up, but I do have one more announcement and it's about a brand new giveaway. So we're gonna do the same thing we did last year. And I was trying to tell a story earlier, but I'm pretty sure I got distracted. So last year when we were doing our 5K giveaway, um, I gave a t-shirt and then a small prize to everybody who didn't win the t-shirt. But the prize for the 5K was a season one t-shirt. And uh, what you have to do to enter the contest, we're gonna do the same thing, only this time we wanna try to get to 10K. So we're a ways off, we're almost at 6K, but I think we can do it. We just got to really push. So what we're going to do is everybody who shares my channel on any social media platform can then send me an email or a message on my Planet with a Palette Facebook. Uh, but my email address is planetwapalette at gmail.com. Just send me a screenshot of where you shared uh, the link to the show and uh, you will be entered to win. Everybody who participates will be getting a small gift and then there will be a winner drawn at the end and that winner will get a season two t-shirt in your size. So more giveaways. We love that. And I'm really excited. I really want to try to push this season to get to 10 K and I know that we can do it. So with your help, so thank you very much for participating. And last year when I did the 5K giveaway, what I did was I made a special um, custom card um, that was like a recipe card that had a recipe that I have not yet done on the show, but that I make all the time at home. It's my chicken, like my chicken noodle bake or my chicken noodle soup. And it's so good, um, but I'm gonna do something similar this time. Um, so you'll be getting like a special not available uh, recipe if you enter um, and you could win a t-shirt and you'd be helping me out. So thank you so much. Love y'all. And I hope you have a great week and I will see y'all next week with my awesome friend Monica and we are going to make some matzo ball soup and a delicious dessert. And you do not want to miss it because it is a great episode. All right. Love y'all. I'm going to go lay down, try to rest up. I'm really hoping to get well in time for my trip. So <laughs> wish me luck. It's the planet with a palate cooking show.